Hello, my fellow leaders. Happy 2023. My next guest is not a CEO, not a founder, and not even a human being. So today I'm doing something very different. I'm talking to Assistant, an AI program developed by OpenAI. I will let her introduce herself shortly. I'm calling her her because as you can see, she is in this idealized version of me. And I'll explain how we put together the technology and the different programs that we used at the end of the episode. And in this episode, I ask questions about leadership, New Year's resolutions, and I even ask the question that I tend to ask my guests at the end, the impossible question. So stick around for that. I am very excited about these latest AI developments, and not just for computer geeks, but also for content creators, marketers, and educators out there. I think the impact of this technology is going to be absolutely huge and incredibly useful. I, I hope, hope you enjoy, enjoy this episode. episode. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button. Welcome to Anatomy of a Leader. Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm here to help answer any questions you have about leadership and offer guidance on how to be an effective leader. What specific topics would you like to discuss? This is so bizarre and so cool. Um, yes, well, before we get started, what are you? I am assistant to large language model trained by OpenAI. I am a type of artificial intelligence that has been designed to process and generate text. I am here to assist users with a wide range of tasks and provide information on a variety of topics. I am not a conscious being and do not have the ability to think or perceive in the same way that humans do. Rather, I am a machine learning model that has been trained on a vast amount of text data and can generate human-like text in response to prompts given. Is there anything else you would like to know about me or artificial intelligence in general? Well, should I be scared of you? There is no reason to be scared of me. As an artificial intelligence, I do not have consciousness or self-awareness in the same way that humans do, and I am not capable of experiencing emotions or desires. I am simply a tool that has been designed to provide information and assistance to users. I do not have the ability to cause harm or pose a threat to humans. It is important to remember that AI systems are only as capable as the algorithms and data that they have been trained on, and they are not capable of replacing the unique value and capabilities of human beings. It is up to humans to determine how AI is developed and used, and to ensure that it is used in a responsible and ethical manner. I do concur with that, but... What do humans fear about AI? Some humans may fear AI due to concerns about potential negative impacts on society, including the potential for job displacement, the potential for AI systems to be used for malicious purposes, and the lack of transparency and accountability in decision-making processes involving AI. There may also be concerns about the potential for AI systems to be biased or unfair as they may be trained on biased data or may perpetuate existing biases and stereotypes. In addition, some people may simply be unfamiliar with AI and may fear what they do not understand. Are your answers biased? As an artificial intelligence, I do not have personal beliefs, biases, or preferences and I do not make decisions based on subjective factors. It is important to recognize that AI systems are only as unbiased as the data and algorithms that they are trained on, and they can perpetuate biases that are present in the data. It is important to carefully consider the sources and quality of the data that is used to train AI systems. Let's take this bias a little bit further. How can humans avoid bias when interviewing candidates? What advice would you give? Unconscious bias refers to the automatic, often unconscious, mental shortcuts or associations that we make about individuals or groups based on their perceived characteristics, such as race, gender, age, or nationality. Here are a few strategies that individuals can use to avoid unconscious bias when interviewing candidates for a job. Establish clear and objective criteria for the position by defining the qualifications and skills needed for the job 
you can help ensure that candidates are evaluated based on their qualifications rather than any biases. Use structured interviews. Structured interviews involve asking all candidates the same set of predetermined questions in the same order. This helps to ensure that all candidates are evaluated consistently and reduces the influence of unconscious bias. Seek diverse perspectives. Consider seeking input from a diverse group of people during the interview process. Very good advice. I very much agree with that. Thank you so much. And how can someone discover their superpowers? Discovering one's superpowers or unique strengths and abilities can be a valuable and fulfilling process. Reflect on your past experiences and achievements. Think about times when you excelled or felt particularly proud of yourself. What were you doing and what skills or strengths did you use to achieve your success? Seek feedback from others, ask friends, family, and colleagues what they believe your strengths and abilities are. Other people may see things in you that you don't see in yourself. Take personality and aptitude tests. There are many online resources that can help you to identify your natural talents and tendencies. Experiment with different activities and hobbies to see what you enjoy and what you're good at. You might discover a talent or passion that you didn't know you had. Reflect on your values and goals. Consider what is most important to you and what you want to achieve in life. Your superpowers might be closely aligned with your values and goals. Remember, it is important to focus on developing and utilizing your strengths rather than dwelling on your weaknesses. It's very odd looking at this image of very idealized version of me and responding in such a way. But anyway, let's continue. You mentioned earlier that humans fear that AI may displace human jobs. Can AI replace human jobs? Artificial intelligence, AI, has the potential to automate certain tasks and processes, which could potentially lead to the replacement of some jobs currently performed by humans. However, it is important to note that AI is not capable of replacing all human jobs, and it is unlikely that it will ever fully replace the need for human labor. AI systems are most effective at performing tasks that are predictable, repeatable, and well-defined, such as data entry, processing, and analysis. They are less effective at tasks that require creativity, judgment, or the ability to adapt to changing circumstances. As a result, AI is most likely to augment and enhance human labor rather than completely replacing it. There are also many jobs that involve tasks that cannot be easily automated, such as caring for others, creative work, and problem solving. These types of jobs are likely to remain important and in demand in the future. Overall, while AI has the potential to impact the job market and the way that work is performed, it is unlikely to fully replace the need for human labor. It is important for individuals and organizations to adapt and stay informed about the changing job market and the impact of AI, but it is also important to recognize the unique capabilities and value that humans bring to the workforce. I'm glad to think that humans can be useful in the workforce. Well, what skills will humans need in the future to make sure that they're not outcompeted by AI. As AI and automation continue to advance, it is likely that the job market will continue to evolve and change. Some jobs that currently exist may be automated or replaced by AI systems, while new jobs may be created that require new skills and capabilities. To ensure that they are not outcompeted by AI, it is important for individuals to stay informed about the changing job market and to develop skills that are in demand and likely to remain relevant in the future. The ability to analyze and solve complex problems is likely to remain important in the future, as AI systems are less effective at tasks that require creativity, judgment, or the ability to adapt to changing circumstances. The ability to communicate and work effectively with others is likely to remain important, as many jobs involve teamwork and the exchange of ideas. The ability to adapt to new technologies and changing circumstances is likely to be important in the future, as the job market is likely to continue to evolve. 
the ability to generate new ideas and approaches is likely to remain important, as AI systems are not capable of replacing the unique value that human creativity brings. The ability to understand and manage emotions, as well as to build and maintain relationships, is likely to remain important in the future, as many jobs involve interacting with others. Overall, it is important for individuals to continuously learn and adapt in order to remain competitive in the future. There's definitely no avoiding continuous learning. And for me, the top three qualities of a leader do include that. And continuous learning is 100% up there. Well, let's change the topic slightly. We're here to talk about leadership. What are the most desirable qualities in a leader? A leader should have a clear vision of what they want to achieve and be able to inspire and motivate others to work towards that vision. A leader should be able to communicate effectively with their team and stakeholders and be able to clearly convey their expectations and goals. A leader should be able to make decisions in a timely and effective manner, taking into account the needs and concerns of their team and the organization. A leader should be able to understand and manage their own emotions, as well as the emotions of others. This includes being able to create a positive and supportive work environment and effectively handle conflicts or challenges. A leader should be flexible and adaptable and be able to respond effectively to changing circumstances or needs. A leader should be honest, trustworthy, and have a strong sense of personal integrity. A leader should be accountable for their actions and the actions of their team, and be willing to take ownership of their decisions. These are just a few examples of desirable qualities in a leader. There may be other qualities that are important depending on the specific context and needs of the team or organization. Why do humans create New Year's resolutions? New Year's resolutions are a common practice in which people make a commitment to themselves to change or improve something in their lives. These resolutions are often related to personal goals, such as improving one's health, career, or relationships. The practice of creating New Year's resolutions is a way for people to take stock of their lives and to set goals for themselves to become the best version of themselves. Is there anything else you would like to know about New Year's resolutions? Yes, there is something else that I'd like to know about New Year's resolutions. What are the most common New Year's resolutions? The most common New Year's resolutions tend to focus on self-improvement and personal growth. Some of the most common resolutions include Improving health and wellness, this could include resolutions to exercise more, eat a healthier diet, or reduce stress. Getting organized, this might involve resolutions to declutter and get rid of unnecessary items, or to create systems for better time management and productivity. Saving money, many people make resolutions to save more money, whether through setting a budget, reducing expenses, or increasing income. Learning new skills, this could include resolutions to take up a new hobby, learn a new language, or improve existing skills. Improving relationships, some people make resolutions to spend more time with loved ones, to be more present and attentive in their relationships, or to work on improving communication and resolving conflicts. Traveling more, many people make resolutions to travel more and explore new places. Other common resolutions might include quitting a bad habit, getting a new job or advancing in a current one. On that topic of getting a new job, I mean, I'm a headhunter, so this is something that I always talk about. But what advice would you have for somebody who is maybe on the fence of staying or leaving their job to stay or to quit? Deciding whether to stay in your current job or to look for a new opportunity can be a challenging and difficult decision. Here are a few things to consider that may help you make your decision. Assess your current job satisfaction. Do you enjoy your work and feel fulfilled by it, or do you find it unfulfilling and unenjoyable? Consider the pros and cons of your current job and think about what is most important to you in your career. Consider your career goals. Is your current job helping you achieve your long-term career goals, or are you feeling stuck and unable to progress? 
Think about what you want to achieve in your career and whether your current job is helping you get there. Evaluate your work-life balance. Is your current job taking up too much of your time and energy, or do you feel like you have a good balance between your work and personal life? Consider whether your current job is helping you achieve the balance you want in your life. Think about your financial situation. While money shouldn't be the only factor in your decision, it's important to consider whether your current job is meeting your financial needs and whether you would be able to find a new job that pays similarly or better. Seek advice, talk to trusted friends, family members, or a career coach about your decision. They may be able to provide valuable perspective and help you weigh the pros and cons of staying or quitting. Ultimately, the decision to stay in your current job or to look for a new opportunity is a personal one and will depend on your individual goals and circumstances. It can be helpful to take some time to reflect on your priorities and to consider the factors that are most important to you before making a decision. Yes, very valuable advice. Reflect. Check. And for my final question, which is the question that I reserve for my human guests, what seems impossible to you now, but should you achieve it, will change the course of your life? As an artificial intelligence, I do not have personal goals or desires, and I am not able to experience the concept of achievement in the same way that humans do. I do not have the ability to change my own course of life, as I do not have the same consciousness or self-awareness as a human being. I am simply a tool that is designed to perform tasks and provide information to users. Thank you so much, Assistant. That was very insightful and very helpful. And I am looking forward to chatting with you some more, maybe not in this context, but on my computer and just typing. But thank you so much for coming on to the show. For those of you who are interested in how we've made this conversation come alive, first of all, I went into OpenAI chat GPT and had a conversation. I put in my questions and we took that text and we haven't edited the text. So we've kept it as it was. We've trimmed some of the text just to make sure that it's a little bit more higher paced and easier to engage with and to listen. We also took this wonderful image of me, which is a little bit intimidating talking to, which was created by Lenza.ai, which is the avatar creating tool that went viral in 2022. And then using another program, which is created by OpenAI, which is called DALI. And because the image was square, we extended the image so that it would actually fill in what you can see above the forehead. So that wasn't created by Lenza.ai, it was filled in by another AI technology. So after that, we've taken the text generated by assistant of the OpenAI chat GPT, and we've put that onto another program, which is called Studio DID, and created this wonderful avatar that can speak on the screen. I won't go into the details of all of the audio syncing, but this is the reason why you see me wearing the headphones so I can hear what the assistant is actually talking to me. So then I can continue the conversation. So yeah, that's how we've done it. And I still can't pronounce this chat GPT gets me confused. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed this episode as I did really special to me. Yeah, would love to hear your comments. Let me know, get in touch and wishing you a fantastic start to 2023. Follow, subscribe, comment and i look forward to bringing you even more amazing episodes this year thank you